Here we go again. Eric Ten Hag was asked about the substitutions of Harry Maguire and Nusser Mazraoui following the conclusion of United's Premier League game against Aston Villa yesterday. The defensive pair were both withdrawn at half-time at Villa Park, with Maguire in clear discomfort following a set-piece for the hosts in the closing stages of the first 45. While Nusser Mazraoui, like Maguire, also failed to reappear for the second period, with Victor Lindelof and Matthijs De Ligt sent on to fulfill the right-back and right-sided center-half roles, respectively. After the full-time whistle, manager Eric Ten Hag was questioned about the pair and confirmed that both were replaced due to physical issues. Ten Hag told the BBC after the goalless draw, We have to take them off at half-time. On Monday, we have to see what is the diagnosis on it. He added in his post-match interview with Man U TV, We have to assess this. I can't tell you now what the issue is. I know what the issue is, but I cannot say now how good or bad it is. We have to see assess this on Monday, and then we will bring you news. The boss confirmed in his post-match press conference that Maguire and Johnny Evans played at Villa Park due to rotation. Maguire, who scored the stoppage time equalizer at FC Porto on Thursday night, was not selected by interim manager Lee Carsley in the England squad for forthcoming Nations League matches against Greece and Finland. Moroccan fullback Mizraoui has started every league match and been a consistent performer since he joined the Reds from Bayern Munich in August. The Reds are next in action against Brentford at Old Trafford in the Premier League on Saturday the 19th of October. Meanwhile, former Manchester United striker Dimitar Berbatov didn't hold back after the team's 0-0 draw with Aston Villa yesterday. He pointed out the poor performance of many players, saying that they should feel ashamed of how they played. Berbatov's criticism came after Johnny Evans, one of the older and less prominent players, was named Man of the Match. He stated, I am trying to find the right words here. Everybody on the pitch today should be ashamed because Johnny Evans is Man of the Match. Berbatov's comment suggests that the rest of the team didn't perform up to standard, as Evans, who is not expected to be the standout player, had to carry much of the team's efforts. The draw adds to the growing concerns about Manchester United's performance this season. However, Paul Scholes, another Manchester United legend, also shared his thoughts after Johnny Evans was named Man of the Match in the draw against Aston Villa. Scholes highlighted a deeper issue with United's defense, saying, He's 36. He just came to train with Man United, and then he's their best defender. That tells you something isn't quite right. Scholes' comment emphasizes concerns about Manchester United's current squad. Evans, who originally returned to the club just to train, ended up playing and being the standout defender. This, according to Scholes, reflects a worrying lack of quality in the team's defense. With both Berbatov and Scholes voicing their concerns, it's clear that Manchester United needs to step up their game, especially in defense, if they want to compete at a higher level this season. The team's reliance on a veteran like Evans may be a sign that major changes are needed. In other news, after Manchester United's goalless draw against Aston Villa, manager Eric Ten Hag expressed his satisfaction with the team's defensive performance. Despite not scoring, Ten Hag emphasized the positives, particularly the defensive side of the game. It's the fourth clean sheet this season, Ten Hag said, pointing out that Manchester United's defense has been strong so far. Keeping the opposition from scoring has been a key focus for the team, and this match was another example of that. The Dutch manager also highlighted the team's unity and discipline. You can see we had very good organization and togetherness, he added. The players worked well as a unit, ensuring Aston Villa couldn't break through their defense. Ten Hag was also impressed by the attitude and mentality of the team. There was good character and good spirit as a team. Determined, resilient, he noted. The players showed determination and resilience, even in a tough match where chances were limited. While Manchester United didn't manage to score, the solid defense and strong team spirit were clear positives from the match. Fans will be hoping the team can continue to build on this foundation in the upcoming games. Meanwhile, there are growing reports of tension between Manchester United's current manager, Eric Ten Hag, and former club striker, Ruud van Nistelrooy. 
the situation has raised concerns, especially with rumors linking Van Nistelrooy to the club's possible future plans under Ineos. As part of this speculation, Van Nistelrooy was reportedly recruited by Ineos earlier this summer. Some believe he might have been brought in as a possible replacement for Ten Hag, should a change in management be needed. Van Nistelrooy, known for his successful playing career at United, is seen by some as a safe pair of hands. His familiarity with the club and recent experience as a coach could make him an attractive option if things don't work out with Ten Hag. This has reportedly created some unease between the two Dutchmen. While Ten Hag had a successful first season with United, including winning the Carabao Cup and securing a Champions League spot, the club's performance this season hasn't lived up to expectations. A string of poor results and injuries has put pressure on the manager. This has fueled rumors that the club might be considering changes behind the scenes, especially if Ineos takes control. As of now, there has been no official comment from Manchester United, Eric Ten Hag, or Ruud van Nistelrooy regarding these thrilling news and updates. It remains to be seen how this situation will unfold, but many fans are keeping a close eye on the relationship between Ten Hag and Van Nistelrooy. For now, Manchester United continues to focus on turning their season around, but the tension in the background adds another layer of intrigue to the club's ongoing struggles. On the other side, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag recently spoke about new signing Manuel Ugarte, making it clear that the young midfielder needs time to adapt to life at Old Trafford. When asked by the media about Ugarte's progress, Ten Hag said, He has to get used to our game model. He has to get used to his teammates. He has to get used to the intensity of Man United. In short, Ugarte needs time. Ugarte, who joined Manchester United from PSG, is known for his energy and strong tackling in midfield. However, adjusting to a new club, especially one like United, can be challenging. Ten Hag's comments suggest that while Ugarte has potential, he will need time to fully fit into the team's style of play and the demands of the Premier League. The Dutch coach emphasized the need for patience. He explained that the young player must not only learn the tactics, but also build chemistry with his teammates and get used to the high level of intensity expected at Manchester United. This transition process is natural for most new players, especially when coming from a different league. Despite the slow start, fans should remain optimistic. With Ten Hag's track record of developing young talents, Ugarte is in good hands. It may take some time before we see his best, but once settled, he could become an important player for United's future. So, Ugarte's arrival brings promise, but as Ten Hag points out, it's important to give him the time he needs to fully adapt to his new surroundings. Patience will be key as the midfielder works to make his mark at Manchester United. Meanwhile, Manchester United manager Eric Ten Hag has expressed his happiness over the return of Rasmus Hoyland after the striker spent two months out due to injury. Ten Hag told the media, Rasmus Hoyland back makes me very happy. After two months out, hopefully, he is now fit. We need him. Hoyland, who joined Manchester United, had a promising start before being sidelined with an injury. Now back in the squad, Ten Hag is optimistic about the impact Hoyland can have on the team, especially as United looks to strengthen their attack. He keeps improving in his fitness levels, and that he also has a consistent fit season will help us, Ten Hag added. Having a fully fit Hoyland is important for the team, as he brings energy and strength to United's forward line. The 21-year-old Danish striker is seen as a key player for the club's future, and Ten Hag believes that if he stays fit for the rest of the season, it will significantly boost United's chances of success. Ten Hag's comments also highlight the need for consistency and fitness, especially for a young player like Hoyland. Staying injury-free will allow him to develop further and contribute more to the team's goals. Hoyland's return is a positive development for Manchester United. Ten Hag is hopeful that Hoyland can stay fit and continue to improve, helping the team as they aim for a strong season ahead. Fans can expect to see more of the young striker as he works his way back to full match fitness. In other news, Bruno Fernandes, one of Manchester United's key players, has spoken openly about his struggles both personally and with the team. 
The Portuguese midfielder has been at the club for almost five years, experiencing both highs and lows. However, he admitted that this current period has been one of the hardest for him. Fernandes said, This is a tough moment as a team, and personally for me, one of the hardest. Almost five years at the club with ups and downs, good and bad moments. His words reflect how challenging it has been for the entire team this season, but also how deeply it has affected him as an individual. Despite these struggles, Fernandez emphasized that he is not the type of person to shy away from challenges. I have always had challenges and adversities throughout my career, and something that's never happened was that I go silent or hide myself from responsibilities in difficult moments, he explained. This shows his determination to face difficulties head-on and take responsibility for his performance. Fernandez also expressed his disappointment in his current form. I know it sounds cliché and most of you United fans will be tired of it, but no one is more disappointed than myself with my own moment, he said, acknowledging the frustrations that both he and the fans are feeling. However, he remains grateful for the fans who have continued to support him. Even through this moment, I appreciate all of you that had positive messages of belief in me and the team. This shows that despite the tough times, Fernandez values the encouragement from those who still believe in him and the team. Bruno Fernandez's words reflect his commitment to Manchester United and his readiness to overcome the difficulties he is facing. The fans will be hoping that both he and the team can turn things around soon. Meanwhile, it's confirmed that there is Manchester United's crucial meeting in London on Tuesday. Key figures to attend, amid growing pressure on Ten Hag. After Sunday's Premier League match against Aston Villa, Manchester United's top decision-makers are set to meet in London to discuss the club's current situation. This comes as pressure continues to mount on manager Eric Ten Hag due to a series of disappointing performances. The meeting, scheduled for Tuesday, has been planned for some time, but has gained more attention given the team's recent struggles. The future direction of the club and Ten Hag's position could be discussed during this session. Who's attending the meeting? Several key figures involved in the club's operations will be present, including Sir Jim Ratcliffe, a potential investor who has been linked with a partial takeover of the club. Sir Dave Brailsford will attend. An experienced sports director, Joel Glazer, a co-owner of Manchester United, Dan Ashworth, a highly regarded sporting director, Omar Barada, Manchester United's chief operating officer, Jason Wilcox, known for his work at other top clubs, Roger Bell, likely to provide insights on the club's commercial and strategic plans, Colette Roche, chief operating officer at Manchester United, who oversees day-to-day -day operations. All are expected to attend this crucial meeting on Tuesday. So, what's at stake? Manchester United has faced growing concerns from fans and pundits over their recent form and management decisions. The London meeting is expected to address the club's future plans, both on and off the pitch, with the future of Eric Ten Hag potentially being a key topic of discussion. As fans wait for updates, this meeting could play a significant role in shaping Manchester United's future as they continue their Premier League campaign and European competition. On the other side, with just three wins in the first nine games, many fans and analysts are questioning whether he is the right man to lead the club back to glory. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, one of Manchester United's prominent figures, recently shared his thoughts on the situation. When asked about his faith in Ten Hag, Ratcliffe told BBC Sport that it's not his call to make. I like Eric. I think he's a very good coach. But at the end of the day, it's not my decision. The management team is running Manchester United, and they have to decide how best to handle things, he said. He also pointed out that the current management team, including CEO Omar Barada and sporting director Dan Ashworth, only joined the club in July. This means they are still adjusting to their roles and will need time to make the right decisions for the club. Our objective is very clear. We want to take Manchester United back to where it should be, but it's not there yet. As for Ten Hag, he remains optimistic, insisting that he still has the support of the club's leadership. I'm not thinking about my future because that's not the topic. We're all in this together, the ownership, the leadership team, the staff, and the players. We've brought in new players, and they need time to adapt, 
said Ten Hag. He highlighted Manuel Ugarte as one of the new signings who needs time to adjust to the team's style of play and the intensity of the Premier League. Ten Hag also expressed his hope that striker Rasmus Hoylund, who has returned to fitness, will be a key player moving forward. However, despite the positive outlook, there are clear areas where Manchester United needs to improve, particularly in defense. Harry Maguire, one of the team's senior players, recently questioned the team's mental strength after their draw against Porto. Ten Hag acknowledged that while the team has shown resilience, there are still aspects of their mentality and performance that need to improve if they want to compete for trophies this season. Manchester United's next game against Aston Villa will be crucial in determining the direction of the season. Fans and experts alike will be watching closely to see if Ten Hag can turn things around. However, according to Manchester Evening News is that Manchester United's upcoming match against Aston Villa on Sunday is shaping up to be a pivotal moment for Eric Ten Hag's future at the club. With just three wins in nine games, the pressure is mounting, and this fixture could determine whether he stays in charge. After a shaky start to the season, many believe that a poor result against Villa could seal Ten Hag's fate. Despite his insistence that the club's leadership remains behind him, the growing frustration among fans and the media suggests otherwise. Manchester United, once a dominant force in English football, has struggled to find consistency, and this weekend's game is seen as a crucial turning point. Ten Hag has acknowledged that there is room for improvement, especially in defence, and has emphasised the need for players like Rasmus Hoyland to make a consistent impact now that he is fit. However, the Dutchman also knows that time is running out, and he needs results quickly. Sunday's trip to Aston Villa isn't just another game, it's a test of Ten Hag's ability to turn things around and restore faith in his leadership. A win could give him the breathing room he needs, while a loss may force the club to make difficult decisions. All eyes will be on Villa Park to see how this drama unfolds. On the other side, Manchester United legend Paul Scholes has laid into the current side, questioning their identity and progress under manager Eric Ten Hag. The Red Devils have now gone four games without a win in all competitions since the 7-0 thrashing of Barnsley, drawing three and losing spectacularly to Tottenham Hotspur. Last night saw United once again score three goals away from home in Europe, but just like last season, this didn't result in a win as they had to settle for a 3-3 draw in Porto. The pressure continues to ramp up on manager Eric Ten Hag with the match against Aston Villa on Sunday potentially his last in the United dugout, as owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe will reportedly be in attendance to cast an eye over proceedings. Speaking to the Daily Mail on United's progress this season, Scholes blasted the current side claiming, You don't see where the next good performance or win is coming from. I don't think the players even understand what the manager wants from them. They look like a poorly coached team. It's difficult to watch. In a damning critique of Ten Hag and his coaches, he stated, It's two and a bit years now, and I feel like there's no progression when teams like Liverpool, Manchester City and Arsenal are progressing all the time. With United, it feels like the opposite. It feels like we're regressing. We're going the wrong way, as results would suggest. All fans want is a bit of direction, but there's a lack of hope. The team looks so far off being anywhere near competitive. Despite the interview taking place before United's match with FC Porto, Skoll's next criticism could have aligned perfectly with what happened yesterday. Rashford was in sublime form, scoring and assisting while cutting the Dragons to pieces, but was bizarrely hooked at half-time with Ten Hag, later claiming it was to rest him for Sunday. The substitution certainly took the wind out of United's sails, as they looked much less of a threat down the left-hand side when Alejandro Garnacho came on. Scholes blasted Ten Hag's decision to omit Rashford from the match against Crystal Palace last month, after his fine showing against Barnsley, where he grabbed a brace and an assist. I thought he had turned a corner. I thought it was a really strange decision to leave him out of the Palace game. Just when you think he's back and firing again, his confidence looks low again, and you're back to square one. The legendary United midfielder then took aim at the club's recruitment over the last few years, claiming they should have spent the money on sure things, like Harry Kane and Declan Rice. He also insisted that the manager's lack of identifiable playing style 
makes it hard to capture the right type of player. The manager makes recruitment difficult because we don't know how they want to play. Recruiting players for a style of play you know nothing about becomes virtually impossible. They had Rasmus Hoyland, a very young center forward who has been injured. It could take another 12 months to get the best out of him. Finally, Scholes was left exasperated about where United stand in the modern game, claiming they are still the biggest in the world, but admitted he wasn't sure what market the club was in anymore, after years of disappointment and underperformance.